Hi, I'm Adelaide Merrick, and I'm gonna play God Rest G Merry Gentlemen on my acoustic guitar. Christmas. Yeah, we're gonna make a change to the law of feast because of things we cannot do no more we're gonna make a change to the law of feast because of things we cannot do no more drive around the square jenny has long hair no one gets it cut hair salon is shut cars are moving slow coffee is to go buns are on the run this is so much fun can no washers tell me nothing i'm saving seats can no washers tell me nothing can no washers tell me nothing i'm saving seats can no washers tell me nothing candles here they are don't light them in the car music in the air band will still be there now the fun begins six feet from my friends miss sitting in the pew Zoom will have to do. Pastor's gonna preach on live stream about Jesus' birth. Pastor's gonna preach on live stream. Pastor's gonna preach on live stream about Jesus' birth. Pastor's gonna preach on live stream. We're gonna make a change to the law of peace. Cause of things we cannot do no more. We're gonna make a change to the law of peace. Cause of things we cannot do no more. Hi everyone, it's David Piner. I'm happy to be able to share with you all tonight the, the Putz tradition of the Moravian Church and the way that tradition has been practiced within my family for a very long time and even for multiple generations. We've all heard about the earlier Moravians in Salem who built their very large-scale decorations, built them to fill entire rooms, and then entertained one another by opening their homes so people could travel around and see um, their puts decorations that, that the families were creating. I wanted to share with you this photograph of an earlier puts. This is the Veerling puts. Dr. Veerling lived at the top of Church Street. This would have been created by later generations in the Veerling family. And again, you get some sense of the scale of the puts when you look at this cabin that's right over here in the photograph. And right over here is the ca cabin itself. So you see how large those installations were at that time, the amount of investment and energy that the earlier Moravians were making in their puts decorations. Within my lifetime, puts building has focused pretty much on the creation of these large-scale nativity scenes like this one as a small child, maybe 10. So 60 years ago, almost, I began building Put, uh, uh, our family puts these were these three rocks I collected back in that early beginning and I have carried these rocks around ever since and have added to it that initial creation of mine was flat and very very simple 
Over the years, I've elaborated it by adding dimension to it. Laura and I began to create this one in the late 70s when we added the hillside and this set of figures, which were just pottery figures that I painted. The, the puts base is nothing but a stack of uh, pieces of styrofoam laid in there just like blocks, randomly almost. A string of Christmas lights, regular old Christmas lights that I focus by attaching aluminum foil to each light so that it directs the light in the way that I want it to go. And then, of course, the primary element is the moss, easily gathered from the side of the road and so useful and easy to install to cover up all of the other messy components of the put so that you end up then with this magical sort of creation. It's very important in building a put, or it is to me at least, to think in terms of scale. So, for example, the trees. I use basically weeds of the type that you can collect on the side of the road that again creates the sort of illusion of a tree. Very simple, nothing to it. I have loved this tradition. It's easy, it's dramatic. When my boys were little, it competed well against all of the other secular dimensions of Christmas. I loved coming home from work and finding the dinosaurs and the action figures working their way to the manger. And so it gave my boys a way of touching the story and experiencing it with power. And I found that very important. I wanted to say, again, back to scale, I'm replacing the straw in the stable this year. I don't just use regular old straw. I, again, get dry grass from the side of the road and cut it into pieces so it's sort of more scaled to the figures. And here they come. The donkey, then Joseph and Mary, and the babe lying in the manger. I cannot think of a better metaphor for, for Christmas than the pulling together of all of these humble, simple, dirty, rugged elements and then having them so totally transformed as they are once you place the Christ child in the heart of it. It is a beautiful metaphor for Christmas, and it's been my joy to share it with you tonight.
Hello and welcome to our show. I'm your host, Ivana B. Walthy, and this is What's Going to Make You Happy. Our first contestant is a famous fashion model. She's made the covers of all those magazines. Let's give it up for Marsha Mello. Hi, everybody. Hi. And our second contestant has traveled all the way from Nazareth, Israel. The pride of Bethlehem, the risen one himself. Let's give a warm welcome to Jesus the Christ. It's a pleasure to be here, Ivana. And our third contestant, born and raised right here in Winston-Salem, hardest working person in our town, and mentions it every chance they get. Saul Mine. You're all gonna lose, even you, Rob boy. Nobody beats Saul Mine. Contestants? Hands on your buzzers, here comes round one. And what's going to make you happy? Uh, what is money, Ivana? Lots of money, and hard work, too. I'm sorry, Sal, but you ha- I haven't asked the question yet. Really nice new clothes, you know? Something that'll make me look beautiful. That'll make me happy. I'm sorry, Marsha, but I still haven't asked the question yet. Our first question is what? Bing bong. The attitudes are what is going to make you really happy. I haven't asked the question yet, but you're absolutely correct. Yay! How in the world did you know the question before I asked it, Jesus? Lucky guess, or maybe I'm the son of God. Our next question, please don't answer until I ask it, it is this. What do most pe- people say will make them happy? Is it A, money, B, fame, or C, love and friendships? Money. I'm sorry. That's right. Told you. Why are you sorry? Money is always the answer to happiness, isn't it? Hmm. Well, our next question is a follow-up. Though money is what most people think will make them happy. What does the Bible say really makes people happy? Really nice clothes. Wrong answer. Well then, shopping, it always makes me happy. I'm sorry, shopping isn't correct either. Ordering on Amazon.com. Working hard, that's what God's all about. Working, following the rules. I'm sorry, Saul, that is incorrect. Bing bong. Being meek makes you happy, of honor. The meek's honest hearts will allow them to see the presence of God all around them, and it will be like the whole world is theirs because they'll see God everywhere. That's what really makes you happy, seeing God with you. Meek? You mean the wimps are going to get everything? The meeks all aren't wimps. They are people who go, don't go around thinking about themselves all the time. People who look for God. I'm sorry, what was the question? The question was, according to God, what actually makes for happiness? Oh, shopping, definitely. Shopping, then. Right after church. I'm sorry, that's still not right. Uh, Making lots of money and giving lots of money away. That's what you gotta do. Uh, no, not quite. Shopping online for Bibles with friends. Uh, no, not even close. Having a great job and everybody respecting you because you look sharp at church and feel like a million bucks. King of the world. No, Saul. Thankfully, that is also incorrect. What was the question again? I keep forgetting it. Most people do, Marsha. The question is, according to God, what will really make people happy? Bing bong. Doing right even when it's unpopular or hurts. Being honest and faithful even though others may ridicule you for it. It's all about having a good heart and seeking to follow God. Ah! I got a question for you, Ivana. Who is this guy? His name is Jesus. He is famous for teaching, healing, and especially forgiving sins. Bing bong. <laughs> and I was also the first person to speak the Beatitudes. Oh, so what, Ivano? I'm supposed to be impressed and listen to him just because he taught, healed, and forgives, forgave sins? Come on! That's the idea, Saul. 
shopping with my Bible after church in a really nice outfit with a nice pair of shoes and giving that poor man on the sidewalk a quarter before I meet my friends for lunch. Buzz. Blast your week of mine, huh, Jesus, like Marsha? Bing bong. <laughs> Blessed are the peacemakers, Saul, and people who don't go around thinking they are better than everyone else. People who try to help. Uh, yeah, good luck with that addict to Jesus. It ain't gonna get you nothing nowhere. Bing bong. Except with God. Uh, uh. It's okay, Jesus. I'm baptized. Me and the man upstairs are okay. Okay, if you follow me, Saul, you'll be great. Maybe even awesome in God's eyes. And that's all the time we have for what's going to make you happy. Tune in next week. Yay! Hey, home church friends. This is Jane, your administrative assistant. I have really missed seeing you all so much, and I hope you're doing well. I have one little joke for you. What did the gingerbread man take to bed with him? He took his cookie sheet. I wish you all a very Merry Christmas, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.
Hi, I'm here tonight to share with you all, my home church family, one of my favorite Christmas decorations and traditions, my Advent wreath. My Advent wreath is very special to me. It was a gift to me from my grandmother in 1983. Many of you will recognize this version of an Advent wreath and know that a lot of people call it a Moravian Advent wreath. Even though it's not really Moravian, it was designed by a Moravian lady, my grandmother, Evelyn Spock. She designed this adaptation of an Advent wreath in 1955 when she was decorating the newly renovated John Vogler House for Christmas. After it was on display that Christmas in Old Salem, it became very popular in Winston-Salem, and she made hundreds of these. And she went around to garden clubs and taught people how to make their own, and lots and lots of people in Winston-Salem had an Advent wreath similar to this in their homes, and I hope they still do. Like all Advent wreaths, it starts with a circle of evergreens. She used boxwood. There's a candle for each Sunday in Advent. She used beeswax. She added red ribbons and berries, and in the center, a red dowel and topped it with a Moravian star. One of the most fun and interesting things she did in her adaptation of an Advent wreath was to add miniatures and tiny toys that represented interests of the family for whom she was making the wreath. When she gave me this wreath in 1983, it had a few things on it. And as you can see, over the years, I have added. Every time I found something small that meant something to our family, I would get it and we'd put it on the wreath. I can show you a few things. Here's um, Love Feast and Deaners, Morning Star, a Duck Hunter for Steve, birth certificates for Ben and Anna Wade, a cello for Ben, graduation certificate, for somebody, <laughs> um, a fisherman, Indian guides, drum, baseball bat, cows for Steve's farm, cookbooks for me, on and on. I couldn't possibly show you everything that's on here, but they all have a special meaning to us. Today is the first Sunday in Advent, and tonight we'll light the first candle on this wreath. And when we light it, I'll remember my grandmother and I'll think about Christmases growing up with my parents and my siblings, and I'll remember Christmases here with Steve and our children and watching them grow up. And every time I walk by during the Christmas season, something will catch my eye and make me smile and bring back a wonderful memory because this wreath really does tell our story and it is very dear to us and I have loved sharing it with you. We wish you a Christmas full of hope, joy, peace, and love just like the four Sundays in Advent. Merry Christmas from the Strasburgs. Oh, Mary, rock, rock, rock your little baby. Rock your child in the stable tonight. Oh, Mary, rock, rock, rock your little baby. Rock your baby in the heavenly light. Oh, Mary, rock. Mary, rock, rock, rock your little baby. Rock your Ooh, child in the stable tonight. Oh, Mary, rock. Mary, rock, rock your little baby. Rock your baby in the heavenly light. Angels come from far and wide just to be at the baby's side. Join us now.
I can't, can't figure out how to make it go. All right. Yeah. Yeah, Starts to go. Oh, okay. And now a Christmas magic trick. When you bring these two ornaments together and blow between them, you think that the balls will spread farther apart. And yet, watch what happens. That's so amazing. This is a Christmas classic in the Tobiasen household. This year we celebrate apart Love is always near Church pews empty Yet our hearts are full For our Savior is here Have you Self, a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. Someday soon, our troubles will be out of sight. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay. Next year all our troubles will be miles away. Precious friends who are dear to us will be near to us once more. Someday soon we all will be together if the fates allow. 